I call to order the February 23rd, 2016 meeting of the Oshkosh Common Council. <coughs> Welcome to everyone joining us tonight here in the council chamber, as well as those watching or listening through Oshkosh Community Media Services. We are pleased to have citizens participate in their local government in any way, so welcome to all. Would the city clerk please take the roll call? Pack? Here. Pansky? Here. Stepanik? Clark? Here. Allison Osby? Here. Herman? Here. Cummings? Here. Present, six. Now, would Deputy Mayor Peck please lead this in the invocation, and then we'll do the Pledge of Allegiance with our students afterward. <coughs> We ask for guidance tonight as we be begin this meeting. May all those who participate in our discussions and our decisions reflect the values that we cherish in this great city. Okay, kids can come forward now. I guess over here. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. I just stay there. I have something for each of you. Yay. You have a certificate for your participation. You want to turn that way and face the audience and the teachers. <laughs> Kevin Lentz. Kevin. Kevin. What school do you go to? What grade do you go to? First on the agenda tonight is citizen statements to council. Citizens are to address the council only. Statements are limited to five minutes, must address items that are not listed on the council meeting agenda, are limited to issues that have an impact on the city of Oshkosh, and the common council may address at a future meeting and must not include endorsements of any candidates or other electionary. Are there any, is there anyone in the audience who'd like to step, step forward? I see no one, so we'll move to the consent agenda items. These items are those of a routine administrative nature that are voted on by the council in a single roll call vote. Staff recommends approval of all items. Any member of the public or common council may request that an item be removed from the consent agenda <coughs> for discussion. <coughs> One, approval of bills presented by the finance director. Receipt and filing of museum board minutes from January 7, 2016. Receipt and filing of Common Council Minutes from February 9, 2016. Receipt of claim filed by the city's insurance company, A. Kaylee Steger, for alleged vehicle damage due to a driver to driving over a snow pile, Main Street. Resolution 16-62, approved professional service agreement 
with McMahon Associates, Inc. for inspection, plan reviews, $90,000. Resolution 16-63, approve amendment to Inspection Services Division, fee scheduling, deleting electrical contract license fees, and clarification on calculating building permit fees. Resolution 16-64, a bid, award bid for HVAC improvements, media services, phone room for general services to get mechanical services, $39,800. Resolution 16-65, award bid for public works contract number 16-19 to H&8 Industries, Inc. for water filtration plant replacement, water filtration, filtration plant equipment replacement, Replacement $523,424. <coughs> Resolution 16-66, award bid for public works contract number 16-03 to PTS Contractors, Inc. for Snell Road West Lift Station and Inceptor Sewer, $7,324,034.43. <coughs> Resolution 16-67, approve engineering services agreement with ACOM Technical Services, Inc. for construction-related engineering services for public work contract number 16-03, $801,280. Resolution 16-68, approve change order number one for public works contract number 14-10, Southwest Industrial Park Expansion, TID number 23, phases 3 and 4 utilities, $57,986.95. Resolution 16-69, approve amendment to engineering services agreement with Brown and Caldwell for design and bid support for Ferno Avenue watershed, North Main Street area detention basin, $31,523. Resolution 16-70, approve distribution of Fisk Gallup Trust Funds by Senior Services Division to Medical Services to Income Qualified Citizens. Resolution 16-71, cancel outstanding <coughs> checks, write off delinquent and uncollectible accounts. Resolution 16-72, rescind Resolution 16-61, and authorized borrowing from trust funds of the state of Wisconsin in the sum of $711,300 for the purpose of financing railroad spur, light removal, and utility infrastructure. Resolution 16-73 through 16-85 are all for special events this year, so I will not read the year or the words of special event. The first is Oshkosh Festivals, Inc. to utilize city streets for the Oshkosh St. Patrick's Day Parade and Party, March 19. <laughs> Winnebago, Winnebago Audubon Society Oshkosh Bird Fest Committee to utilize Menominee Park for Oshkosh Bird Fest, May 7. Terry's Bar to utilize Menominee Park for Terry's Bar Walleye Tourney, May 21. Resolution 16-76, <coughs> Hoagie's Bar to utilize Menominee Park for Hoagie's Walleye Warm-Up, May 28. Resolution 16-77, Larry Mees to utilize South Park for the reading of the name ceremony, May 30. Resolution 16-78, Oshkosh Festivals, Inc. to utilize Leach Amphitheater, Riverside Parking Lot, and City Streets for Oshkosh Iris Fest, 5K and One Mile Run Walk, June 11 and 12. Oshkosh Fine Arts Association to utilize South Park for the Winnebago Land Art Fair June 11 and 12. Central Wisconsin Auto Collectors to utilize South Park for the Central Wisconsin Auto Collectors Car Show and Flea Market June 26. Vietnam Veterans of America Chapter 437 to utilize city streets to hold the Oshkosh 4th of July Parade July 4. Resolution 16-82, Mercury Marine, Trident Boats, and the Boat Dock to utilize Monty Park for the ba Bagel Walleye Club Tournament Series, June 5, July 10, and July 31. Resolution 16-83, Business Improvement District, the BID, Marketing Consortium, Consortium to utilize City Streets and Opera House Square for the Downtown Oshkosh Chalk Walk, September 10. 
Patrick Boyce and Jennifer Colwells to utilize Opera House Square for their vow renewal October, September 24. Last is Resolution 16-85, <coughs> Oshkosh Festivals, Inc. to utilize Dockside Restaurant Location at 425 Nebraska Street, Nebraska Street to hold Oshkosh Oktoberfest and to utilize City Streets and Riverwalk for their 2K Beer Run and Costume Contest October 20, October 1. Resolution 16-86, <coughs> approve appointment to the Sustain Sustainability Advisory Board. Resolution 16-86-87, approve combination Class B license and operator licenses. That ends the consent agenda. Is anyone from the public that would like to speak to any of these? And I will bring it back to the council for a motion and a second. Uh, so moved. So moved. Second. Is there any discussion? Um, I would just like to, I think, James, you can probably handle these. We don't need to have them. Steve, not that I don't want you to come up, but you know. <laughs> uh, there's some rather large uh, bid aw awards on this tonight. These were all covered as part of our CIP, but just um, uh, let's see here. The um, uh, 1665, the water filtration plant equipment replacement, the uh, Snell Road, 1666, Snell Road West Lift Station Interceptor Sewer, and the uh, Approve Engineering Services Agreement with AECOM for, for $801,280. Like I said, these were all approved in our CIP plan, but if you could just give the citizens in the chamber here tonight, as well as those watching and listening, a little flavor behind what those are. Yeah, the um, awarding the bids for the uh, water filtration plant equipment <coughs> replacement. Um, you know, the water filtration plant is a industrial facility, if you will. You know, it is responsible for treating and preparing all of the water that we utilize within the city. Um, as a part of doing that, you know, they have equipment that has to operate 24/7, 365, and a part of maintaining that equipment uh, periodically means some of it's got to be replaced. Um, the funding for uh, this contract has been spread out over the last three CIPs, um, so it's kind of uh, combining several CIP items into one larger contract to be able to hopefully get some better pricing. Okay. So it's just maintaining the equipment that we need um, and replacing equipment that needs to be replaced to keep that facility running at its peak. Um, as far as the uh, Snow West uh, lift station and interceptor sewer. Um, there's currently a small pump station located on what is now West Snow Road, formerly Fountain Avenue. Um, that facility has reached the end of its useful life. Um, in conjunction with the flows that are being generated um, east of Highway 41 via the prison and other development in that area, uh, we're constructing a new interceptor sewer to redirect several flows um, primarily from the prison um, to this new pump station and then utilizing the existing force main infrastructure to get it into a larger interceptor sewer along the river. What this does is it does open up a significant amount of area south of Snell Road along the Jackson Corridor um, for more development. Right now the sanitary sewer in that area is operating at in excess of 100% of capacity. So in order to relieve the loading off of that smaller sewer, uh, we needed to get a new interceptor sewer and get it over to this new pump station so um, we can better handle the flows and open up some more area for development ability. Uh, the engineering services with AECOM, that is construction management services to um, oversee the construction of the interceptor sewer and the pump station. Uh, pump station project is very complex with a lot of equipment, machinery, you know, HVAC, you know, any number of things. So um, it's a level of uh, expertise that we don't have with our in-house staff. So we do need to consult with outside consultants to make sure that what the contractors are proposing complies with the intent of the plans and specs. Mm -hmm. Thank you. <coughs> I'll just Mr. Mayor? Yes. Uh, I don't know if Mr. Roloff can answer this one, but um, item number 15, resolution 16-72, if you could let us know why we would want to rescind a resolution that we just approved two weeks ago. You know, I have to give <laughs> staff a lot of credit for, uh, there's a lot of technical things that the state wants uh, to get done when we do these loans, and the council approved it at the very last meeting. Uh, right after it was done, Ms. Larson forwarded the information to the state, and the state called us up the next day and said, we just lowered our rates. 
now you can take the higher rate or you can rescind your old resolution we just can't say yes we'll take the lower rate the council has to say yes we'll take the lower rate uh, so we're going to save about ten thousand dollars by this little action right here so we thought maybe you would like that idea so we put it back on the agenda yeah great job <laughs> thank you thank Ms. Larson for for taking the call when she uh, when she was uh, <laughs> getting called about that well thank you Ms. Larson <coughs> Councilman Herman you yeah I, that was one of my questions but I'd like uh, Ms. Larson to come forward I just got a question on resolution 16-71 This kind of follows like the deputy mayor with the questions. You want to just give us a little bit background for our citizens why we're canceling outstanding checks and writing off delinquent and uncollectible accounts? Sure. That is part of our U, um, annual year end process. We do not stop the collection process, we just remove them from our general ledger. Okay. So we still have we have a company that we contract with or do we send out notices to try to we do pursue collections internally however we also do have a collections agency okay and then the delinquent and non-collectibles those are mostly bankruptcies yes okay all right thank you if there are no other further comments or questions I do have one comment on resolution 16-81 which is the 4th of July parade that will again be going down Main Street, Main to Irving to Anomaly Park. If there are no further questions, would the city clerk please take the roll? Peck? Aye. Hansky? Aye. Clark? Aye. Allison Osby? Aye. Herman? Aye. Cummings? Aye. Carried six. There were no items to remove from the consent agenda, so we'll go to pending ordinances. Ordinance 16-88. Uh, Mr. Mayor, um, the petitioner has requested that this be pulled from the agenda and laid over until our March 8th meeting. Make a motion to uh, remove it from consideration till the March meeting. Second. Second. Do we then discuss before we take the roll? Mm -hmm. The audience want to come forward. Well, we have a motion and a second. Any discussion? Yeah. Now, will the city clerk take the roll? Pack. Aye. <coughs> Excuse me, Kansky. Aye. Clark. Aye. Allison Osby. Aye. Herman. Aye. Cummings. Aye. Carried six. Ordinance 16-89, approve repealing and recreating section 2-47 Public Arts and Beautification Committee. Does anyone from the audience want to come forward with any comments? I see no one, so I'll bring it back to the council for a motion and a second. So moved. Second. Discussion? Uh, I would just like, uh, for the sake of our citizens, if uh, <coughs> Mr. Roloff or any of the staff can uh, Kind of give a background, maybe uh, Darren. Yeah. Um, give some background as to exactly what we're doing here and um, the purpose of this action. Mr. Birch has been working on this for a number of years, so I'll let him uh, give the background because it, uh, I think, it predates several council members. Yeah, thank you for bringing me up. the uh, The background on this is for a number of years we've been looking at. Uh, uh, we've been looking at ways to improve public spaces within the community and one of the ways to improve public spaces through the community a lot of other uh, cities you think of some of the, the, the some great cities like Chicago New York uh, they have great public art uh, they, they use public art to define public spaces they use public beautification uh, improvements to just to improve the public realm and what we're doing with this particular with this particular body is to bring people together to work on the, to focus on those type of items throughout the community with the renewed interest in the neighborhoods of the community with all the redevelopment we have on going on going on downtown 
with the re reconstruction of uh, North Main Street where we did a lot of public improvements. We want to build upon that. We don't really have a, a body out there, a public body, looking at uh, ways to really improve the public realm through uh, public art and through public beautification projects. You have things like downtown with the bid. The bid has the planters, but we don't have, you know, you go into a lot of communities and you'll see a bunch of planters running up and down a major corridor coming in through in through the community. So those are the kind of things. Or in, in art and public parks, you have the Lake Fly project that we're looking at. Uh, various things, uh, to, you know, the Lake Fly to be put in public uh, along the River Walk or in, or in some of the parks. So we're 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 forming this body to work on things like that to improve the public realm. It was a body that was in place that, that you know that that was handling some of the public gifts or donations. That's not changing. Really, what this is changing is really uh, for a group of citizens to come together to work on public beautification and arts projects. Thank you. I, I have a question. Not to put you on the spot, what's the board makeup going to be? We don't know that. We need. There's. No, there has. I mean, there's some information that there'll be a council member, director of the pain the museum. But well, how, roughly, well, how many citizens will be involved in? There'll be seven citizens, uh, which would be one. I think that would include one council member. I think that's right. what, the, what the ordinance says. So it'll be six and one council member. Uh, the Payne Library and Parks are all uh, ex officio non-voting non members of the committee. And if citizens want to get involved in this board, how do they, what's the process? I guess uh, like any, like our normal recruitment process to the board, they would uh, fill an application that they're interested in and then to the mayor and council to appoint. And how soon do you think um, this board and commission can be up and running? I mean, what's your hope, I guess? Stru Say summer or spring? Sure. I think structurally, I mean, in internally with the staff, staff is there to support it. Uh, now it's just a matter of getting some people, uh, people appointed to the committee and getting together and starting work on projects. You anticipate monthly meetings, quarterly meetings, or it kind of just depends on what's on their agenda, I imagine? I, I think it's going to ebb and flow based on what's on their agenda. I think you want to start with a monthly meeting, uh, and then hopefully maybe you know things are, are going well enough that you can go down to quarterly or something like that. But it would be great if you have to meet once a month to talk about projects that are going on. So you anticipate like our neighborhood associations submitting stuff to this board for approval and things like that is that kind of how I, I guess I'm trying to let the citizens know how the process might work to I, I, or we don't know yet I, I think that's still it still has to unfold really you know the the, the basic the basic uh, responsibility will be to look at public arts and beautification projects it could be in a neighborhood could be in a corridor could be along the river walk so I think we're still gonna we've got to come together and, and figure that out yet but now by creating the by creating this committee, we've got a structure in place now. We can move forward in phase two and get people uh, people recruited and seated on the committee. And under this board, and and that they'll have uh, ordinances and codes to kind of abide by or follow or have a, as a guide to them. Do we have those in place? As far as I know, we have something that we approved about like putting up murals. Well, well, I mean, that would be the the only ordinance I can really think that that really specifically refers to this particular body would be the the appeals of the of the mural ordinance. Everything else is is you know if you're going to put a, pe a piece of public art along the river walk or in a park, you're going to go first to the parks, first to the parks board and bounce it off of them or vice something like. So they're this board's going to have to work in cooperation with that. We also are going to be doing things within the right of way, so that's a privilege or an encroachment or something like that. So okay. we're going to be dealing with the planning commission and things back before council. Yeah. Thanks for the information. Appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you very much. Any other questions? I took them away from Caroline. Every <laughs> single one. <laughs> <laughs> Will the city clerk please take the roll? Pack? Aye. Pansky? Aye. <coughs> Clark? Aye. Allison? Aye. Aye. Herman? Aye. Cummings? Aye. Carried six. We now have uh, new ordinances. There are four of them, and there will be, if I read this right, there will be no action taken on any of the four. Is that correct? All right. That's correct. Ordinance 16-90, approve amendments to the City of Oshkosh Municipal Code, Chapter 19, and repeal Section 25-119 pertaining to parks and recreation, the regulation of boat launches, fishing docks and piers, parking, parking and boat launch, user fee, and zoo entrance fee. 
there any discussion from the audience? Just keep going. <laughs> Hi, my name is Kathleen Bender. I live on 30 Bowen Street. And I actually have a letter to read from a neighbor of mine who is unable to be here tonight. Um, I also want to say that I concur with everything that he has pointed out. He's calling this paper precedence. The foot of Bowen Street, that portion from Bayshore Street south to the Fox River, <coughs> is historically and functionally a fire lane. The dock, which has been rebuilt for recreational fishing, was positioned and used to hold the city fire trucks to lower hoses into the Fox River and pump water to fire locations before the construction of fire hydrants. The first home to be built in this area was the home of Stanley Webster, one of the first white settlers. A monument stands on the southwest corner of Bowen and Bayshore in his memory. The second house to be built on the foot of Bowen Street was 14 Bowen, some 115 feet from the dock in 1960 by the late Vern Eggers. Mark, who I'm reading this letter from, purchased this home from him in April of 1974. Is this the place to? It depends on, is it maybe a question, <coughs> is this about <coughs> the sidewalk or about our <coughs> parking regulations? He covers, he covers several issues on that. Okay, because this is only about the parking issue, not about no, this is Excuse me. This, this one is the, the hours of operation. yeah. This is this only about the hours of the boat launch. This has nothing to do with the sidewalk. Oh, okay. So you want me to go sit down by my dish and just <laughs> read later? <laughs> yeah, depends on what you have to say. I'm just this that is would a be very limited one, I believe, issue. Just because the word Bowen's on it doesn't mean it necessarily relates. Okay. This has to do the with the hours of the boat launch, the, parking the, the fishing dock. The next 1691, I think, is the parking side of this. So why don't you stay there and we'll just move on to the next ordinance because you're a little out of place. Mm -hmm. so there's no action. We go to the next ordinance, which is 16-91. Approved parking regulation changes on 10th Avenue and Bone Street. Now you can continue. No. It's in the right sequence. <coughs> Should I continue reading yeah, this whole yeah, thing? Yeah, you're in the right sequence. We've got oh, you in the right place. Thank you. Um, Mark has improved the shoreline with concrete and rock to hold back the ever-present erosion of the shoreline from boat wake and storm action across the mouth of the Fox River from the west. Uh, he has cemented the concrete slabs together from his old driveway for strength and picked up bushels, bushels, excuse me, bushels of debris which floated in the rocks and onto grass where the water rose high enough to in inundate the lower portions of the shore and roadway. If it were not for the relatively short distance, approximately one-fourth mile from the railroad bridge, the erosion from southwest and westerly winds would have devastated this shoreline years ago. Only with constant repair and maintenance has the shoreline been partially preserved. It is this property the city wants to entrench along the uh, entrench across and then dredge deeply into the water basin floor to fit a large and expensive five foot eight foot aqueduct. No one has <coughs> asked him permission to excavate on this frontage. Calls and letters to the city attorney for conference have gone unanswered by her from October 2015. <coughs> The city engineer plans indicate the widening of the traveled street from the present 26 width in front of his home to 28 feet. This is to provide parking on one side of the street. The street, as proposed, will be dangerously close, as little as two feet, to the existing shore and at a vertical level 
similar to the existing street level. You may ask why this is being done, and the answer you will get is to improve the access to the Bowen Street fishing dock. Further, you will be told that this widening is necessary because of the addition of a five-foot sidewalk on the east side of the street, which none of the neighbors want, and will make the improvement or the movement of the road to the west necessary to fit the proposed 28-foot road. I'll skip the part about the sidewalks. <coughs> if the underlying reasons for all this unnecessary expense to the inhabitants and the city taxpayer is for easier access to the Bowen Street dock, he frankly doesn't get it. The, pr pr the proposed cul-de-sac is too small for equipment and any uh, one making a drop-off fishing equipment legally nearly impossible because parked cars would prevent other traffic from turning around to exit the street without backing into private driveways. The closest parking place will be right in front of his home. Let's, let us ponder this point for a few seconds, as is now. The fishermen have just 20 feet to get onto the dock after taking equipment from their vehicles. With the new proposed changes of construction, they will have to park their cars in front of our homes and still carry <coughs> and walk considerable distances to get to the dock now carrying their equipment down the new five-foot wide sidewalk. By the way, the city does not want to provide any painted slots for these five parking places, and the handicapped persons apparently are just plain out of luck because it will be first come, first serve for parking slots. As for now, the handicap of Oshkosh have used private vans and also the cabulants to be dropped off to the uh, to fish and the cab drivers actually help these persons to get all their equipment to where they're going to be fishing as for now the handicap of Oshkosh have used oh I said that already seems to have worked quite well he thinks that this new system is going to cause more problems than it was supposed to solve don't forget all this expense, the sidewalk, the widened street, the encroachment on already tiny front yards is all due to a very few fishermen who want the city to make a freeway out of our little fire lane. <clears throat> With a vote to continue as proposed in this resolution, pre precedence to neighborhood dwelling will have been trashed for another city park in the name of progress or Oshkosh on the water. A vote to add more than curb and gutter to this portion of Bowen Street is a slap in the face for, to every taxpaying citizen of Oshkosh and should bring to mind the question, why are surrounding communities growing while Oshkosh stagnates and limps from one special event to the next? You, the Common Council, have passed resolution after resolution without the whole truth. The truth or half-truth you have been given is from employees of the city and other volunteers of whom may have conflict of interest in their recommendations. This is not healthy for progress or the people of Oshkosh. Please offer amendments that will preclude the expansion of the foot of Bowen Street from Bayshore to the Fox River to include only curb and gutter on the 28-foot wide street with no sidewalk or parking, as has been the case since houses were built. Thank you for your patience and consideration. Signed, Mark Radel, 14 Bowen Street. Thank you. Next, we have Ordinance 16-92. Anybody else wants to talk in it? Oh. Come forward, please. Yep. Yeah, come, on come, on. Come, come on forward. Mr. 
Steve Lindo, 2 Bowen Street. I'm the house next to the dock. Uh, we are actually less than 40 feet from the actual dock. Did you say something about changing the hours on the dock? It's to conform with the park ordinance that the dock would only be open from sunrise till 10 p.m. Correct, Mr. Maurer? Yes. Mm -hmm. So that, that will remain as is. As is, correct. All we're, all we're doing is there's some other parts, sir, that... It's actually just moving from one section of the code to a different section number. Section of the code, okay. correct, and making it's everything not... uniform through all our parks for fishing. That's, that's fine. We, that's one of the reasons we felt comfortable buying that home. Uh, we would have some control. That sign also says no loitering. Correct. Fishing dock. Mm -hmm. uh, Mr. Radel's letter addressed quite a few of the issues I wanted to do. Uh, I can step back up if you want, or I can give you my two or three points right now for this situation. It's about parking. It's just about it's parking. Just about parking, parking, parking portion of it. Parking and address the sidewalk later. Mm -hmm. All right. I'll, uh, if it's all right with you, repeat later. Yep. Is there anyone else who would like to come forward to speak about this ordinance? I see I no just, one. I just want Mr. Herman. Mr. Sheriff, I see in the audience. This is also 10th Avenue, if you have any comments about the parking on 10th Avenue. Okay, very good. Thank you. I just wanted to. And I would just point out, uh, just as a clarification, Mr. Uh, Collins sent you a revised memo. There was some, uh, a little bit of confusion uh, following the traffic <coughs> review board. So there's nothing about ratchet and death <coughs> in the agenda, and you probably won't see it. So. Never mind. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. All right, ordinance 16-92, amend the description of boundaries and speed limit ordinance pertaining to Oshkosh Congress Avenue. Is there anyone in the audience that would like to come forward? If not, we'll move to ordinance 16-93, and again, there'll be no formal action taken on this item. Readopt municipal code book. Would the audience like to come forward? Next, we have pending resolution, resolution 16-94, approve final resolution for special assessments, contract number 16-04, paving, sidewalk, driveway, and utilities, first local street concrete paving program, north side area. Is there anyone from the audience that would like to come forward? This, this would be would where be the chance. discussion, this would be the discussion of the sidewalk portion of that. <laughs> Steve Lindo, 2 Bowen Street, back again. Uh, this is quite a project. It's, uh, it's beautiful. But you folks represent the citizens of Oshkosh. Even though Steve Gody's done a great job of presenting this, there's a couple things that he didn't quite come out and tell us. I'm the number one house next to the dock. The way it's been explained to me by Mr. Gody is that I pay for one third of the street, the city pays for the second, the center of the street, and the property on the other side pays for the other third. Well, there's nobody over there. So the city is picking up $29,000 a street for my property. <clears throat> I have 115 foot supposedly of frontage. The sidewalk alone is $2,000. It's five feet wide. Ordinance say four feet for a street under 50 feet wide. We don't, the reason Mr. Gody said five feet is that he'd have to put bump outs in that sidewalk so that strollers could pass each other with all the traffic on that street. Even Mr. Engel said there isn't any traffic on that street. There's also six built-in bump outs on that street. They're called driveways. We don't need a five-foot sidewalk. The street itself, they want to put down a concrete sidewalk. 
hopefully all of you have been down there this is a destination for a fishing dock I don't understand what they mean by destination to a fishing dock it's not a park it's a fishing dock people have walked down the street forever if we have to have a sidewalk it should be four feet wide it would save me alone four hundred dollars the assessment for the sidewalk in front of that 115 feet is two thousand dollars 400 bucks is 400 bucks when it shouldn't even be there the concrete street itself mr. Gordy says the concrete is last longer and is better than asphalt well that may be true and he says that the prices are somewhat comparable but not the work that has to go into putting all the reinforcing and the cutting and the laying of the concrete versus laying down asphalt in one day that has two things number one <clears throat> the concrete street has to cure in order to be viable for a warranty it should cure at least four possibly five weeks and it has to be laid in two separate parts they can't lay one whole street the asphalt can be laid in one day and cars can drive on it so the expense and the inconvenience of the concrete on a super super street actually I just saw a TV program last week called modern marbles that's what we can call this street incidentally but it was about asphalt and asphalt is pretty predominant in the streets in the United States of America according to what they say there's four million miles of roads in the United States 94% of them are asphalt I think it's an uh, very as I said you people are our stewards for the citizens tax dollars we need to take a very good look at this project to see if we can't put that money in an area that could actually use it rather than a street that's very short this dead end has six properties on one side of the street to a destination fishing dock and I'd still like to know what that means thank you is there anyone else in the audience like to speak to this issue if there's no one I'll bring it back no, they're just sitting down okay um, if there's no one coming forward I'll bring it back to the council for a motion and a second so moved second second <coughs> council discussion questions I have a couple of questions mr. go <coughs> thank you for coming forward um, to mr. Linda's um, concerns originally this was proposed to be an asphalt street and after analysis I guess in the engineering department and that determined to make it concrete Can you kind of go into why that change was made the initial thought was that we were going to be putting a storm sewer down through here limited utility work we we're going to treat it very similar to some of the other dead-end streets um, the dead-end of Harney comes to mind with limited access uh, no parking arrangements as we were going through the design process it was brought to my attention that this was identified in the outdoor parks and recreation plan to improve access including sidewalk and parking for the facility hence we changed gears and we're looking at making it a more of a full street versus just a, a asphalt a wide asphalt uh, pavement to serve a few residences for drive access he also has a concern about the width of the sidewalk if we would amend to four feet would that be an issue are we compliant in all cases if we go from four feet to five feet or will we not be in compliant ADA recently updated their regulations to, to five feet for sidewalk in the public right-of-way it does allow provisions to go to four feet with five foot areas at certain intervals for allowing wheelchairs and disabled people to pass I'm not sure what that interval is uh, driveways may not be eligible for that because everything would have to be at 2% or under cross slope okay all right thank you so Steve you can stay if you'd stay there so part of the reason that we are 
putting the five foot sidewalk in is to address accessibility to the citizens of Oshkosh Correct. across the city as well. Correct. So Anyone that wants people that, that want to visit different neighborhoods or access things in, in that area. So we are addressing all of the citizens of Oshkosh as part of this with that. Correct. And related to concrete versus asphalt, concrete does have a longer lifespan, correct? Concrete has less maintenance involved in getting right. it to the so, same lifespan, yes. All right. So it is, it is, while asphalt may be less upfront, the long-term cost of asphalt will eventually outpace concrete. Yes, and that seems to be especially the case here with the quality of stone and aggregate that we have for the limestone for the, the concrete to make it a much stronger material. So it's it's a matter of being frugal. It's a, it, it, it's a matter of being cheap or frugal. And frugal is making sure that your long-term cost is actually less than, is making sure your long-term costs are as minimal as possible as opposed to cheaping out on the front and then paying significant amounts of money on the back side. Yes. Okay. Thank you. It's one more quick question, mm -hmm. Steve. There were some um, comments made at the last council meeting about uh, DNR issues or DNR concerns. We would have to pull permits and, and uh, approve <coughs> plans and, and everything because of how close to the, to the river it is, correct? So all that has to be pre-approved before we can even move forward with the project, correct? Correct. The application is into the DNR for the essentially excavation dredging in the bottom of the, uh, the river to, to install the storm sewer, the land disturbing activities. Uh, our John Ferris, the stormwater supervisor, has had discussions with the DNR person regarding that uh, this week, has been supplying the additional information they have requested. Okay. Thank you very much. Mr. Mayor? If I could just speak on, on this the sidewalk issue, um, I'm a member of the, the Bike and Pedestrian Committee as well, and we have been looking at all of the sidewalks or lack thereof in the city of Oshkosh, and we have identified this area as, as an area that is lacking in this infrastructure. Um, we do recommend that this goes in as the five feet. We would like six if we could get it, but we, we did go to the five. Um, I know there was there was some mention of the the five foot by eight foot box culvert that was intended for this area um, and being below the water table and um, as a member of this uh, both as a council member but also as a member of the stormwater utility um, Oshkosh has several hundred outfalls of which the majority are submerged that is correct so um, this is not out of the ordinary for Oshkosh because of the the way that the water is, operates in the city of Oshkosh. It's not unheard of, and we've made very good use of our existing structures. Yeah. Just a couple of comments I'd like to make on this. Um, having ser I serve on the the um, parks board, and you know this council's approved our park plan. We've approved the the outdoor recreation plan. We also tentatively have an ordinance to allow parking in that area. Um, you know, I think if we approve parking, we got we got to approve the sidewalk in the same sense because I think we would have a liability issue if we say you can park there, but you're going to have to walk on the street. And now, if a citizen would get hit and we didn't provide them a sidewalk, you know, that that may expose us to to an issue. I I totally understand the concerns of the. The citizens it is a very expensive project but it's one that probably needs to be done for the future of Oshkosh down the line yes these citizens have lived there for a very very long time I appreciate all their hard work I appreciate them coming to all the meetings and voicing their concerns but what about 20 years from now as that area changes and as some of that area changes we have to look to the future of Oshkosh um, the dock has been there forever Yes, at one time it was built to be strictly for the fire department and a uh, kind of a just an area to get to the water, to get water, but it is part of our neighborhoods. We're investing in our neighborhoods. We're investing in infrastructure in Oshkosh to, to reduce flooding. 
uh, to have better uh, water, better storm sewers, sanitary sewers, all that. So this is just another piece of the puzzle of putting together a complete city and a complete Oshkosh, and then also having the opportunity, hopefully, that more citizens can use the dock, use the facilities, obviously be courteous to our citizens that are in that area, because this is all new, um, you know, uh, that, that they're going to have to to deal with and it's just like any new subdivisions or other areas of the city as council member um, Pansky mentioned that we want to get sidewalks into and make more accessible make it safer for all our citizens and yes it is a three million dollar project but I think it's one that's that's needed in the city of Oshkosh so I'll be supporting it um, there was a lot of discussion about representing all the citizens of Oshkosh and the infrastructure improvements on this end of the road represent a culmination of an investment that has been made further up Bowen Street as well. Um, the infrastructure that goes as far north um, as some of the projects that we did close to, to Murdoch Street, those are all connected in a system of how our sanitary sewer works and how our stormwater <coughs> works. So we're not building this in isolation. This is part of a, a long-term plan and I'm sure James could fill us in and then the amount of time that goes in on the backside to make sure that when we do these projects we do them frugally and we do them to maximize our money now but also to minimize our costs in the future <coughs> if I may just one correction to the gentleman's statement the work is done on the front end not on the back end but um, yes we, we we understand the concerns of the citizens changes changes something that none of us want to see but we have to sometimes we have to change to continue to move forward and yes we are we do represent the citizens of Oshkosh and in doing that we are stewards of the taxpayers money and with this with the city picking up two-thirds of the cost of this we as a council need to address the overall cost of this and so therefore that is why we have chosen as Mr. Godey pointed out, the con concrete versus asphalt. We don't have, we're not just making a decision based on today, six months, a year from now. We're making these decisions based on 5, 10, 15, 20 years down the road. So yes, we, it, this council has heard your concerns. We understand them. But again, this is in the benefit of the city of Oshkosh and that's what who we represent here and that's why I am supporting this particular project as well if there are <coughs> further comments or questions council the city clerk please take the roll pack aye Pansky aye Clark aye Allison Osby aye Herman aye Cummings aye carried six this takes us to a new resolution, Resolution 16-95, award bid for Public Works Contract Number 16-04 to Dorner, Inc. for paving, sidewalk, driveway, and utilities, first local street concrete paving program, north side area, $5,940,305.41. Mr. anyone from the public that would like to speak to this? <coughs> See no one coming forward. I will bring it back to council for a motion and a second. So moved. Second. Discussion. <coughs> Would the city clerk please take the roll? Pack. Aye. Pansky. Aye. Clark. Aye. Allison Osby. Aye. Herman. Aye. Cummings. Aye. Carried six. Resolution 16-96, approve amendment to previously approved plan development for installation of an electric message center sign within the Universal Business Park, 2340 State Road 44, Taco John's Plan Commission recommends denial. Is there anyone from the public that would like to come forward? Uh, good evening, Council. My name is Tom Sharp, and uh, the address is 1621 Maricopa Drive. Uh, I'm here in support <coughs> of the Electronic Message Center, and I'm the property owner directly to the west of Taco Jets, and I don't see where it's any liability or 
uh, where it would cause my site any problems. And two buildings to the east of Taco John's on the same side of the street is Chase Bank, and they have a pylon sign. And then four buildings to the west of Taco John's on the same side of the street has an electronic message center. And then if you go across the street, which uh, there's Verve Credit Union there, uh, they have an electronic message center, and they're right in the uh, Universal Business Park. If you're familiar with the whole State Road 44 area, um, there's every type of use uh, that you can think of in that area. So I guess I don't see where the, the center, this electronic message center really causes a problem. We did go before Plan Commission, and we, uh, we lost four to three. And some of that's due to the fact I didn't explain myself, uh, didn't explain the situation well, and the owner was uh, out of state, so he couldn't uh, be there as well. Uh, the plan commission was really put in a difficult spot, um, although I think we would have uh, would have won the vote. Um, you know, had the owner been there and explained his situation, but part of what was tough for the plan commission was the owner of Taco John's had a permit pulled, and then he did go ahead and put a sign up that was different than the permit. He now apologizes for that and knows he should have handled that situation differently. And this electronic message center is really important to his ongoing business. So um, that's my thoughts on this. <coughs> so if anybody has any questions, I'd be glad to try and answer. Also, I, I think I'll wait till when we are considering this. If there's anyone else that wants to speak. Okay. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Is there anyone else who would like to address this issue from the audience? I see no one coming forward, so I bring it back to the council <coughs> for a motion and a second. So moved. Second. second. Um, Discussion. Mr. Birch. Um, again, for the people that don't <coughs> see the things that we do in the, the full, when we get the full agenda, staff did write a memo, correct? Correct. Could you summarize the memo? Well, we, uh, the staff was in support of this request. It is, uh, the, the sign itself is consistent with the zoning ordinance regulations, so it does, it does meet those requirements. Uh, the, where they ran into the issue was they, they went through and put up a sign without getting a permit and then without coming back and getting and getting the amendment I think part of the reason and I've, I've seen at the plank mission it, there's a there's a frustration when we they've been seeing a lot of these issues lately where somebody was will, will do something with with the knowledge that they're doing it they either either need a permit for it or they're just doing it until they get caught uh, and, and they've had to deal with a lot of those situations especially with the design standard stuff lately uh, and a lot of those are things that we can't resolve. It's, it's frustrating to us at st as staff because we can't resolve something that doesn't meet the zoning ordinance requirements. So I think the planning commission got caught up in, in a lot of that. Uh, with this particular sign, the, the sign itself is, is it meets the it meets the base standards of the zoning ordinance. So and what they did, they ran a little bit of a, a follow of the covenants at the time, uh, but the GoADC did approve the variance request to the to the covenants. So. From that basis, with them supporting the with them supporting the, the sign request, that was why we were able to write a staff report that, that was supportive of it. So, to summarize, it meets zoning requirements, it meets the covenant requirements, but it didn't meet the requirements that were originally set in the conditional plan use permit. Correct. The, the conditional use and plan development. All right. You know, this is one of these damned if you do, damned if you don't decisions. We have rules in place. We have the, the, the plan commission. We have conditional use permits where, where things are set that this is what you will do. The, this particular business owner knew what they had to do. Uh, they went and they pulled the permit 
well yes it meets zoning it didn't meet what they were approved to do they said we want to do this the city said okay you can do this but here are the requirements for you to do this and I understand that you know we still need zoning requirements and everything so staff approves this and everything but this puts council this is this is where we kind of earn our money here you know it, it it sets my concern is is that we set a precedent where even though they can check off these make checks in these check boxes this big one which was the first one that should have been checked off wasn't checked off and I I really don't appreciate and I don't want to ever manage by exception because that's a that's a tough position to be in because once you do that then you sit there and you go the next person that comes in says well I want to move the line this far because you moved it for this guy six inches now I want to move it eight inches next one goes ten inches next one and the next thing we know we don't have anything so I right now I, I'm, I'm, I'm still I mean I've been back and forth so I really don't know where I'm gonna go on this my gut tells me that we need to follow what the rule was that you knew you were supposed to do this and I totally understand that we had the same we had a situation and uh, previously where another old business owner went and knew what they had to do said no I think this is going to be better they went out and this council made the <coughs> I think we, we made the precedent that no you will be you will do what you need to do now but the signs already up correct correct any idea what it would cost uh, mr. Sharf you may have be able to enter the what would the cost be of having to replace the sign to doing what was originally approved in and by the city Yeah, I, we did get a memo that the sign has gone dark, but that doesn't mean the sign will always is is stay dark. The question is, is, is it comes down to either we say no, you put the sign in the way it was supposed to, or this particular sign continues to sit there and, and be dark. So, anybody else got something? Go ahead. I just had a question. I mean, was it was it blatantly intentionally done, or was is this one of the things? things where you have somebody who's an investor that's not always in the area and may you know hire out I mean any any idea if this was intentional <laughs> unfortunately I, the gentleman's not here to yeah. speak yeah. He, did, he did send us an email okay um, so there there was some um, email correspondence that came um, through the city manager's office because no, uh, we did get it yeah. for, for some yeah. technical difficulties but um, the business owner did address that concern in that email so I don't know if you had a chance to see that but mm -hmm. um, throughout the process he does admit that um, to, he has a another location in the city um, that has the manual type of operation sign um, and then he had had discussions with his builder about the electronic board and was told by um, told that the permanent could not be gotten and we were in crunch time to get the business open um, he says I and I quote I proceeded independently and installed the electronic board um, I truly apologize for this action I had listened to some bad advice and instead of relying on the system to get what we needed I took the wrong path I understand through my communications that with Tom that the plan Commission has turned down the updated request by one vote and that this matter will again come before a decision for the City Council um, the sign is vital to our business as it draws much needed attention to our site especially we, we when we only have a short monument sign versus a pylon sign um, and then he goes into the exam the uh, conditions around his property that were mentioned by uh, by by Tom before um, so that was in that email um, so yes he he did take onus to, to try and ratify the process with his builder um, and he ran afoul of the plan Commission um, that being said, 
Um, his gesture of good faith making the sign go dark um, doesn't go unnoticed to me. And the consistency with our zoning and the properties in the area is also um, <coughs> on my mind, as well as um, the covenant variance from Go EDC. Um, as an employee of a business that has an EMC in front of its business, um, I understand how these drive consumer behavior. Um, and in a business like his, taking the time and energy every morning to send a staff member out to change the sign, um, whereas you can set a program and be have that done automatically for you. Um, I understand the plan commission's denial. And that is, you didn't follow the rules or the process, therefore we say no. Um, I also understand staff's point of it's consistent with our zoning, it has the blessing of GoEDC, and it is in a business corridor. This isn't in a residential area. Um, so I'm going to support this because it's consistent with the use around and, um, correct me if I'm wrong, Mr. Birch, uh, our comprehensive plan for this area. Correct. So while the process wasn't followed, um, which I'm disappointed in because I've, I've had dealings with this business owner previously and I've had nothing but positive experiences with him um, outside of my role with city, the city council. Um, the fact that he's willing to own up to that and say, hey, I made a mistake says something, but um, I sincerely hope that we don't have to run into these ever again and that we don't have to draw lines in the sand. Well, I'm also a member of the plan commission, so I was at this meeting and there was a lengthy discussion about this. And it really came down to uh, this is not the first time where we've issued a permit and the person does what they want to do anyway. Then they come back begging for forgiveness forgiveness the issue really was we we issued a permit gave approval and it didn't happen I think we we as a council have to realize do we want to do we want to manage the city by exception or a lot of thought goes into our policies procedures a lot of staff time a lot of taxpayer dollars in these and then every so often we, we find ourselves well, I didn't mean to do it. I didn't understand it. I, I, I think it's a dangerous position. I mean, do we want to do we want to run the city in a responsible manner or run it by exception? That's my point. And this is not the first time it's happened at the plan commission level. Okay. My I have a question. Uh, what is the fee when somebody does this? when a permit has been approved and they don't follow the rules of the so approved permit right now with the with the inspections it's a triple permit fee when you come back on that I don't know what it's, it's what have what has he been assessed in, in a fee so far he hasn't applied for the permit yet so he's not get, or a new permit so he's not got he's not got hit with a triple permit fee yet when it comes back to apply for the per permit to update that'll be a triple permit fee uh, on the on the inspection side our fees on the zoning side aren't aren't yet in uh, are, aren't yet in effect. They won't be in effect until March first. He did have to pay the plan commission review fee uh, to bring to bring it, bring it back through the process, though. And he's paying hmm? those. There's yep. there hasn't been any objection to that. Thank you. The one thing I, I just I want to add is that this this is very frustrating to us, and we this happens to us more often than not. More often than not, you don't see it come to you. Uh, in this particular case, and I can't defend the process, had had the uh, EMC been on the original proposal that came through, we would recommend it for it at the time. So we would have supported the request originally, and we would, again, we supported the request um, when it just recently came through. We think because it's consistent with the zoning uh, and with the, with the general area, that's why we support it. It's very frustrating. We understand that, uh, but from from the, just on our end. Um, we're still supportive of it. We don't like the process. We can't defend the process. That's why we're, we're building in some institutional, some penalties for doing this. Now, is triple fee going to be enough at some time down the road? We'll evaluate it. This is, doesn't, it, it, it's uncommon. It uh, doesn't happen as much as 
think, but it does happen. And at least on this one, we're, we don't have to sort out the zoning. We don't have to sort out the fact that it's not consistent with the zoning code. This one meets the zoning code. It's tougher when somebody comes in. We had another one at Planning Commission two weeks ago. They put in a window, they, or they downsized the window uh, without getting permits, and it's there's no way we can meet, make the window meet the code. So we have to figure out a way to sort that out without trying to have that person rehab their whole kitchen. So they come to us ahead of time. So here's the work. It's easier for us to work out this particular one because they meet the zoning ordinance requirements. There's not much other than the process for us to work out. Um, when it comes to the purview and the scope of responsibility of the plan commission, the plan commission's job <coughs> is to review the merits of proposals as they relate to the zoning ordinance and building code health and safety correct is that the general scope of the look at the zoning ordinance it, 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 it does a development is a development con consistent with the comprehensive plan for the city and consistent with the zoning ordinance requirements so those are two main things that they're going to that they'll be looking okay at so if i'm understanding you correctly staff recommends that this is, should be approved because it meets the merits of the zoning ordinance and the comprehensive land use for the area and what i'm gathering is that the plan commission took exception with the process by which this was done because this is becoming a pattern in the development community to ask for one thing and do something else so the plan commission the way my mind is wrapping around this is that the plan commission stepped outside of their scope of responsibility and focused on the process rather than the merits of the individual proposal <laughs> tough one to answer <laughs> huh darren i'm, gonna agree I, I'm, with I'm, I'm not asking one. you to respond to that that is that's that's how i'm i'm viewing this this is my own personal i don't you don't have to answer that but Having read the, the, the transcript of the of the plan commission meeting minutes, I think this is a case of um, some members of the plan commission are offended by the lack of procedure. Um, the following of the rules that of what they approved it didn't happen. And so they're disappointed with this property owner, but holding this property owner accountable for the sins of other property owners. That's my interpretation and how I read it. Um, that being said, when if staff comes back and says, well, it's consistent with zoning and it's consistent with our comprehensive plan for the area, we're all humans, we all make mistakes. I'm looking at this what's written in front of me the amendment to previously approved plan development installation for an electronic message center at this address when i look at that i don't see a reason not to support this Mayor. um i i guess i concur with council member clark's analogy a little bit um I am disappointed because I like to support all our boards and commissions and you know they voted against this but with the other organizations that support it with staff supporting it the the fine um, you know I I guess as projects are starting to get done I, I mean I know our staff is probably understaffed but at the same time maybe as these projects start to move forward we continue to get maybe get out there a little more often and make sure they're complying with what what the requirements are because maybe we would have caught them putting that sign up maybe beforehand I don't know that for a fact but um, I don't think we can tighten our ordinances anymore our codes we've gone through all that as you said we we're going to be approving them shortly we tighten them we got a fine in place here where the company is going to be paying a significant cost but everything else is in accordance to everything that we're doing so um, I agree that we don't want to you know manage by exception but it, it, at times I just think that um, you know yeah do, mistakes do happen but 
I don't want our business community to think that they can continue to operate in this fashion because um, I think that that's bad because then it doesn't give our boards and commissions teeth. Um, you know, we so I am going to support it, but um, I think somehow maybe Mr. Roloff, we can work with our staff, Mr. Davis, your staff, to kind of, especially when there's maybe one that you kind of feel a little like, you know, there might be an issue here. They might not abide by everything that we put in place so that uh, we can kind of keep an eye on that so we don't have to come back to this type of situation and put council in a tough spot. But if, if you would, if, if, if staff would have said no, <coughs> if it didn't meet our other requirements, go ADC said no, then I, you know, it would have been an easy one to say, no, I won't support it. But in this case, um, not, I, I don't want any of our plan commission members to think I'm not respecting their decision, but in this case, I think we can go forward with it. Thank you. Any further, <coughs> further comments? Would you please take the roll? Pack? Aye. Bansky? Aye. Clark? Aye. Allison Osby? Aye. Herman? Aye. Cummings? No. Carried 5 1. <clears throat> we now move to council discussion, direction of city manager, and further agenda items, and there is nothing there. Actually, yes. uh, Mayor, I do have just a comment. Um, at this point, I know there's a couple of us that are participating in a community reading that is scheduled for tomorrow. As of right now, I do have to leave for Chicago in the morning. Um, if something changes, I'll be there. If not, I will be gone um, for the day. So my apologies to my other council members that may, uh, may go. I have President Herman. Thank you, Mayor. It's not on the, the uh, discussion and that, but uh, the city manager gave us a hard copy a strategic plan. I just have one question, Mr. Roloff. Um, I understand complete in progress. Do you have it on the agenda? It's on his Is it? agenda. Yeah, a couple it's on his down. statement. Under, oh, my, yeah, yeah. under my oh, announcement. I missed that. Ms. Jenks will be here, our, our new HR All right, general. Very good. So Thank you. She's right, anxious man. to get that question. Good. <laughs> Courtney, you might as well start moseying up here. <laughs> All right. I missed that. <coughs> That's okay. That's okay. We're parking Jerry very oh. happy that you're all right. We're excited about it. Yeah. And, and, and then I'm just going to put one pitch out there tonight as I see Ms. Larson smiling. The, uh, uh, I, I want to, first of all, commend Harold Buckholz for his significant contributions and service to the Long Range Finance Committee, but Harold has uh, decided to step down from the Long Range Finance Committee, and again, I thank him for his services. So I'm making a very, very... Um, blatant pitch right now. If there's a, a, some citizens out there that would be interested in joining the Long Range Finance Committee, please contact Mr. Roloff's office or even Ms. Larson's office in the Finance Department. Uh, we could use, uh, we, we're going to have some big shoes to fill, but we're looking for someone to, to come and step forward for the Long Range Finance Committee. And I'll add to what Deputy Mayor Peck said. We have we are always looking for people to join our many boards and commissions. So uh, please fill out an application. All right. Um, now it's me again, huh? Are you, it's, oh, Com yes. Council, council announcements. announcements. All right. Deputy Mayor it, Peck. It, it's it, 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 again. You know, just a very subtle plug. Um, March fifth, the Oshkosh Police Department, the Oshkosh Fire Department. Uh, every year they get together and they put on their Guns and Hoses hockey game. And uh, I'm actually I'm wearing stripes tonight, but that particular night I'll be wearing stripes again. But those will be my black and white ones. And I truly enjoy participating in this. But I do urge our citizens to come out to the Oshkosh YMCA on 20th Avenue. Uh, puck drop is at 3 o'clock. There will be lots of uh, raffles and prizes there. The, uh, the, it's a fundraiser for our local veterans organization. So Ms. Diener, I'm sure we'll probably see you there. Uh, but again, March 5th, Saturday afternoon, the Oshkosh 20th Street YMCA, uh, 3 p.m. face off the Guns N' Hoses hockey game. It's a, gr it's a really good game, and it's a great opportunity to support our uh, veterans. Okay, moving on. Uh, citizen statements to council. 
Citizens are to address the council only. Statements are limited to five minutes. Must address items that are not listed on the council meeting agenda, are limited to issues that have an impact on the city of Oshkosh, and the council, the common council may address at a future meeting and must not include endorsements of any candidate or other electionary. So we would like to step forward. <coughs> I want to thank Pat, um, Tom Pack for inviting me to come back to the council meeting. We have uh, been very busy with my husband. He had a very major surgery done and stuff, and he's making good progress. And my name is Patricia Diener, and I come to you this evening in regard to um, talk about um, asphalt. We just had our street done a couple of years ago, and uh, the whole side, one of the sides are breaking right down to nothing. We have big ditches. We got water sitting. Um, you know, if someone would have listened to me, I went out petitioned for concrete. But you know, wait a couple years, wait a couple years. Well, number two, I can't believe they had a, um, <coughs> I'm trying to think of the word, a grader out doing the streets. I know they go down Jackson, but they're coming down all these little streets. And you know, that gentleman, I felt pretty bad from knowing that he's using this grader. And he can't even make the turns without probably hitting a telephone post. He's sliding all over. I mean, I know we're shorthanded with staff and stuff, but I don't think that's a good idea having him out doing that kind of um, stuff with a grader and not on these little streets. But I'm really disappointed in our street. Um, I'm trying to get our home fixed up and trying to make our my yard nice. And now I'm sitting with a street with water sitting and big big trucks are coming down. I mean, sure, I had people coming in my area to do my garage and all that stuff, but it's getting worse. And um, Dave Peck is not here no more. David Peck out. And I want to address it to you because I have talked to your supervisors. They all say they're going to come back and patch stuff. And it, that's all I hear. And if you want to take a, a look at it, it starts from custard down to Tennessee and it's really breaking up more that uh, it's just cutting right in more and more and I want to take the opportunity I didn't get to come to a couple meetings but I know that I got to go, go personally to meet the chief of, of the police department Mr. Smith I did make my addresses about certain things and I do appreciate him bringing up having cameras on the officers and videos, I think it's going to help everybody, the, the citizen and the officer. Thank you. Thank you very much. Is there any other citizen that would like to come forward? I see no one. So now, city manager announcements and statements. Mr. Roloff. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, status of the citizen survey. Uh, we have mailed out, or the university mailed out, 1,500 citizen surveys last week. Uh, if you were one of the lucky 1,500, I encourage you to fill it out. Uh, we, it's due on March 7th. Uh, for those of you not lucky enough to get it uh, in the mail, uh, the online version will be available uh, around March 1st. But we do want people to do the, the write-in survey. And if you, did it, and if you still want to do it, uh, you can do the online version if you didn't get a, a write-in survey. So, and that will be available from Mar about March 1st to March 15th. And we'll get the results around May 1st. And, Copies will be distributed to council, and we'll get it on the website after that's done. Uh, so I wanted to mention that. Uh, another one, uh, the Algoma Park Neighborhood Association. You may recall that group felt that they maybe they were a little too geographically large. So that group dissolved, <coughs> and one of the uh, areas of that neighborhood created a brand new neighborhood association. The Ferry Crossing Neighborhood Association is what they're naming themselves. Uh, it's just one section of that larger area. I'm not sure if that other group is going to uh, organize, uh, reorganize as a separate group or, uh, or what they're going to do. But uh, hopefully they will, and we'll have an extra neighborhood association. <coughs> uh, follow up to the parking study workshop. I did say I would come to you within one month. Uh, the report I have is that uh, we have had discussions with Walker parking consultants about what the next step in the process would be. And they're willing to help us, of course, at a price, to assist us in specific policies and uh, changes that we would need to make. 
one of the outcomes of the study was that we we absolutely need to change some of our policies I know if you're on the park utility you understand what I'm talking about and even if you aren't on the parking utility you understand it because you've gotten so much input from from businesses and residents in the downtown area uh, so we'll be uh, hopefully the next meeting certainly if not by the next meeting by the meeting after we'll have a contract for Walker to, to finish the work that um, staff wouldn't have the uh, capability of doing of doing in-house um, and with that uh, now the strategic plan fourth quarter 2015 update uh, mr. Herman mentioned it uh, Courtney Jenks of our uh, human resources staff is tasked with monitoring the progress of the strategic plan and she's going to give the council a, a little update uh, based on what you already have and I believe Andy has something on the screen for our uh, viewers at home okay um, so I kept the same temp template as Brian Chapman had um, I just modified it a little bit um, what we did is we added um, a key at the top which shows the check marks are the items that are complete the up arrows which are in green are in progress the down arrows that are in red are below the strategic plan and then the circle which is like an orange color is caution so that's what I'll be going over now here actual plan I did have a question for you yep. and I think this is what Steve was getting at yep what does exactly caution mean does it mean that we're it's falling to the wayside or something that maybe we should focus our priorities on differently it would be more of it's it's in progress but we should maybe put more priorities too okay thank you yep. um, you'll see on the support economic <coughs> development that um, a good majority of them are complete and then there are some that are in progress we did want to note that the um, go, D go EDC is complete so we wanted to note that and then on the continue to strengthen our neighborhoods uh, um, there's the wanted to note that there's nine neighborhood associations that were that we have and then we're working on three more in 2016 and then Mark's gonna address the other ones for <coughs> any that are um, marked in red red or the yellow, yellow circle ones. she's given to me yes. so <laughs> can, can that's I just okay a yep. question on the the in progress um, are we putting any type of a timeline on any of that stuff or is that mostly kind of the the generic sides of these strategic plans where we're just going to continue to um, you know work like one for example on support economic development we talk about work with stakeholders um, you know we're, we're identifying the bucks that prop we're identifying a pioneer um, <coughs> but are we putting any kind of time on in some of these projects then so that we know that they haven't you know not only moved forward but you know, we, we want some results by a certain time. <coughs> Maybe they, I can help out a little <laughs> bit with this process, too. Um, that's a good question, Council Member Herman. Um, some of these um, are not complete for a variety of different circumstances. Mark is going to talk about the ones that are cautionary or were below progress. But the expectation for all of these was to try to complete them by the end of the strategic plan's tenure. And we want to there's still a little bit of time before we uh, move forward with the new iteration of the strategic plan so we do have some time some of these issues for example are not complete because of a staff turnover and we didn't have the staff available to work on a project so those are some of the examples for some of the ones that maybe aren't as far ahead as we would like them to be but it's our expectation that we want to complete all of these um, before the end of the duration of the strategic plan that's our goal and just maybe a follow-up question if and maybe this is hypothetical in a way but if we start to move forward with a plan and and we we had identified it in this strategic plan but it falls off the map let's say at the update is that something that staff is at least going to kind of keep an eye on or monitor or move forward and try to complete it even though it does no longer kind of meet our strategic goal well plan. just to, to talk a little bit about that and um, council might recall when we went through the process uh, I believe this last time we talked about gap analysis right. so we'll take a look at the progress of our, our goals and then we'll took, take a look at the priorities and and you know from experience that over time sometimes those priorities change 
Right. So then after we do that gap analysis, we'll match the, the priorities with the progress. And then council will tell us, hey, we think you need to focus on these because of the priority of it at this particular point in time. And when we have a priority that also matches with um, something that wasn't as accomplished to the level that the council feels is appropriate, those are the ones that typically have been the higher priority items going to the next iteration of the strategic plan. Okay. So typically that's the way we kind of frame it moving forward, but certainly it's it's within council's purview to, to focus us in whatever direction they see it fit. Okay, thank you. Those were the major accomplishments that, and for the folks who were viewing it on uh, at home, it's a little tough to read, but the, the key thing there is when there's check marks next to it or a green arrow, it's either completed or making appropriate progress. So uh, what, uh, what Courtney left with me was the last page, objectives falling short of goal, and I'm only kidding. We, we discussed, and, and I could give background to those, but there's only six items in our entire strategic plan that fall under that category and caution is more yellow light so not as bad as red but certainly uh, one that needs to be looked at uh, with a couple of them they're more about measures and uh, for example on page four under continue to strengthen our neighborhoods there's two and they're both related to the police department and chief smith and i have discussed these um, one has to do with the number of drug related overdoses that really is something that is beyond the capabilities of the police department. Certainly, it's always a worthwhile goal. In fact, as the chief and I discussed it, it talked about reducing drug-related overdoses. Well, I would like it to be zero, and I think everybody in this room would like it to be zero, but the reality is, is that's a, that's a, just, it's just a reality of what we deal with. Um, the goal was there 15, and I don't know if that's really the appropriate number, but that was the number that was set, but we had 18 overdoses in 2015. Did we fail? I don't think we failed, but we will only be satisfied when there's zero. I wouldn't be satisfied if it was 15 overdoses. If it was one of your family members, you wouldn't be satisfied either. Our goal is zero. It's always going to be zero, but that's one of those things that we have to strive towards. Uh, visible presence in uh, bike and uh, foot patrols. We had fewer days in 15 than we did in uh, 14, but the emphasis has been more on quality. I could send, an, or the police chief could send an officer out on 10 bike patrols going around a single block, and if the officer doesn't stop and do anything, he can check it off. But if that officer goes around <coughs> one block and makes 10 contacts, that's a much higher quality. So it's quality versus quantity, and that's something that Chief Smith wants to look at and have some, some viable measures. Um, the other two, or, or there's three in infrastructure. Two of them have to do with uh, uh, two ponds, one for Stringer Creek land acquisition, and the other one, Washburn West Town, the one over by the Shell Station over there. Uh, both of those have been delayed due to staff turnover. That was Mr. Robbie's uh, division that when he moved into a dual role at Public Works Director until uh, Mr. Ferris was hired, we had some shortfalls. But they've also been working since this strategic plan was done. We had a little thing called the uh, Bemis healthcare packaging, that project has risen. So there's various reasons for those things. They're on, pro they're on task to get done, but we may not get it done within 2016, but it's not necessarily a bad thing. We're still making progress. Uh, overhead clutter along gateway corridors, that's capital improvement plan. It's delayed due to funding restrictions. We've, you know, in the two years since we've done this, we adopted a, a borrowing plans that we're gonna limit it. One of these areas is Ninth Avenue. We'd like to get that done, but we got to do it within our means, and, and we'll do that in, as time is appropriate. And then the last one had to do with accountability of special events. What it was, it is about building the pedestrian trail on Washburn, which the council eventually removed from the plan. So once the council made that decision, essentially we could have wiped it off, but in the interest of showing what we had on the plan, we, we chose not to finish up with that goal. But of all the, we had three pages chock full of projects we're working on, and only six of those that I just mentioned are ones that are that are falling behind. And if you take a look at some of these others, uh, for example, create and execute citywide economic development plan, the council's been given a draft. So we're we're on our way to getting those goals done, 
And what I'm really encouraged at is by the time we meet up with uh, Mr. Yankowski to do strategic planning in July, we have done a lot of this and or, and or making great progress towards achieving our goals, which I think is something that we all need to be very pleased and proud of. And I'm happy to answer any questions that you might have. Um, I would agree that with the progress that the city's made, and oftentimes we hear Oshkosh is lagging behind other communities, and I can tell you from my experiences talking to our colleagues from other communities, Oshkosh is seen as a leader in many of the things that we're doing. And a lot, this isn't like one of these, so yes, there's a lot of check marks, there's a lot of green arrows. These were not layup projects. These were not just little bitty, easy to take care of things. I mean, go EDC. That was a four-year plus project to get that going. Uh, and, and we have done that, and we're beginning to see the benefits of that. So for those of you who say that Oshkosh is stagnating and falling behind, I would urge you to, uh, Mark, this is on the website, correct? That we're, we've got access to this. Put it on the first page. Right. Please come out, take a look at this, and see what your city government city staff I commend all of the staff that's working on this this is not just department heads this is the line staff these are the day-to-day -day workers of this so this city is moving forward and this council is as we indicated one of the next things is, is we're going to be setting our next workshop uh, to develop the strategic plan moving forward into 16 17 and 18 so uh, to everyone involved, great work, and uh, we're going to continue doing this. And um, so, and, and if you have any questions, obviously go out to the website, look at this. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. And uh, with that said, the last item under my reports is strategic planning retreat. Looks like Mr. <coughs> Yankowski is available for July 14th. So that's the date we're going to have, and we're working on a, a location. Uh, try to mix it up a little bit, but someplace that is away from City Hall, but within town so that we can uh, focus on it for that day. So if you can mark your calendars for that, that would be wonderful. And that's all I have unless the council has any questions of me. Uh, I have none. Anyone else? No. Nope. We now have a motion from Deputy Mayor Peck to go into a closed session. I move that following the adjournment of this meeting, the council convene into closed session in the city manager's office pursuant to section 19.85, parent 1, parent G of the Wisconsin statutes to confer with legal counsel who will give legal advice concerning strategy to be adopted in regard to litigation in which the city is involved pertaining Joseph E. Kubiak and the Oshkosh pub crawl. Second. Peck? Aye. Pansky? Aye. Clark? Aye. Allison Osby? Aye. Herman? Aye. Cummings? Aye. Carried six. I would like a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Adjourn. Hey. Pitsy.